Okay, it is Valentine's Day. Yay! There are these certain times of the year that I need to become uncomfortable, a little bit anxious. You know, it's when Sonica's birthday is on the way, when it's anniversary on the way, when it's like Valentine's Day, then whew, I need to focus, you know, and, uh, and these are one of those. So we, we've had a good weekend. I'm not playing golf this weekend. And we, uh, my wife got some flowers and some gifts. And last night we were dancing a little bit at home. And so uh, I'm trying to fill up the love tank there. It's unfortunately endlessly deep. And there's always room for more. Indeed. So... So some of you might wonder about Valentine's Day in church, you know, is it in the Bible? No, it's not in the Bible. But if you want to understand how uh, we think, we believe every cultural thing is an opportunity to build bridges to our world and to the people in our world, you know, so we want to grab hold of every opportunity. And uh, it's always an opportunity for marriage and relationships. My wife believes it's always a good excuse. Yes. So we are grabbing hold of Valentine's Day and we want to invest in your relationships, whether you're single or dating or married. We, uh, we want to help you guys grow. Okay, so we've been now married for, in March, we are celebrating 20 years of marriage. So, so we're thankful. Um, and it's supposed to get better every year and it is getting better every year. Every now and again, I still think about oh, those first few years, the amount of talk to sort, and sort things out. You know, it's just like late nights, lights on. Can I please just sleep? No, we got to talk and sort things out now. So I'm, I'm very thankful that we've sorted out a whole lot of things so that we can uh, move forward. But we still have to talk every now and again. It seems it's never, never going to end this side of eternity. <laughs> okay, so we want to, uh, I heard that somebody say this, they said, don't touch the product until you've read the manual. Don't touch the product until you've read the manual, okay? And uh, some of us have over the years touched the product without following the guidelines of the manual. And we've burned our fingers and had our disappointments, but uh, yeah. I mean, I think all of us invest so much in our studies and our careers and our hobbies. And when it comes to marriage, I think often we think it will just kind of work. And I think over the years, we, we've invested quite a bit in books and in marriage manuals. But I think the most benefit that we've, we've found is actually just in the Word of God. And sometimes it's not so easy. The Word of God is, is like this mirror, and it reveals to you that you need God, especially in a marriage. But it's just amazing how every time we go back to the, the basic principles in God's word in terms of a relationship, it, it works. It works, it's not always easy, but I think male and female but being put together, it's never gonna be easy. And that's exactly why we need God and why we need the manual. The manual putting together by God himself. Indeed. So I. I am persuaded that God has a, a, a great sense of humor because he made them male, then he made them female, and then they try and figure that out without me. That just doesn't work, you know? So we want to help you guys today. We want to add some value to your relationships. And so we're going to start off by sharing a bit about falling in love. We're going to speak more of the singles dating, and then we're going to get to staying in love. We're going to be sharing with the married couples, but hopefully you can... Get something from both sides of the story. Okay, so when it comes to relationships, when it comes to falling in love, what is your focus? What should be your focus? Well, traditionally, normally, the focus is, I need to find the right one. I need to find, find, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking for the right one. But that is not the best focus. It should be becoming the right one. Because you could find the right one, and then you mess it up, because you're not the right one. 
You, you haven't become the person that you should be. And so in life, we tend to find, find, find. We're looking, 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 looking. But the focus should be on becoming. Even for the married guys and married people here, yeah, he's still the focus should still be, am I becoming a better me? Okay, and that part of that, that process is that you need to be you need to be patient, and unfortunately, patience is not my strong point. I often ask Sonica to please pray for me. I need patience. I need it now. Please, please, please pray for me. So when I was 19 years old, uh, it was Sonica's 21st birthday party. I always wanted an older woman. So... <laughs> We had a birthday party, Sonica's birthday, 21st, and a few of us, we were, it was in Cape Town, and, and three guys after the birthday party, we drove back to Stelis, to Stellenbosch University, we were students there, and you know, it was one of those moments where the boys became serious, this is like, guys, I'm 19, these guys are like 21 each, you know, and we're like, guys, we're getting old, we need to, like, now, we need to know now, who is the one, we need to find the right one. So it was a very serious, very serious discussion. It was quite intense. The boys were laser focused on who's the one. So we parked outside one of the hostels and the one guy had the brilliant idea. Let's pray. Let's ask God. God's going to show us who's the one. So we prayed. And the one guy prayed. He prayed this very intense prayer, very short prayer, something along the lines of, Father, we thank you that you know who's the one. And we ask that you'd show us right now who's the one. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Who's the one? Who's the one? Who's the one? So the one guy said, now he thinks this girl, and we cracked up laughing because she's completely out of his league. Completely. You know, there's leagues. You need to know about this. If you don't know about this, and if you don't know which league you are in, you need to ask your friends. Okay? Because it doesn't help you you're shooting outside of your league or a little bit too low. You need to find your league. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. That's just how life works. Find your league, and it's good. So anyway, so we laughed at this one guy because he's like, he's crazy. And then the other guy, he listed the like, prettiest three girls in church. And we're also like, hmm, I hope that works out for you. And, uh, and, and in the end, he didn't marry any one of them. He married somebody else. And then they asked me, okay, Andre, who do you think? Who's the one? And I said, Sonica. I think Sonica's the one. And they laughed at me as well, because she's too old for you and whatever else. But, you know. But that was a moment for me because, I, I mean, there's a few moments in my life that I feel I heard from the Lord. And I just knew that God wanted us to be together because we are a partnership that, that for the extension of God's kingdom, we had to find one another, you know. But more than finding the right one, it's always been about becoming the right one. So even 20 years ago or more than 20 years ago when we met, I was a mess but I had this one thing that I was passionate about Jesus. I, I'm like, God, you're my everything. And that was my anchor, and that was Sonica's anchor. And the result was both of us were changed over time. We became better us because that's the key. You need to become. It's not about finding. It's about becoming a better you. Okay, so, there's, so, 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 so the key is what, what is your focus? Finding or becoming, okay, that's the first question you need to ask yourself. And as it, you know, so what, what, what is the goal? What is the purpose of relationship or the purpose of marriage or the purpose of a love relationship, male, female relationship? What's the purpose? Is it your happiness? No, the focus is not on your happiness or my happiness. The focus is ultimately, I want to bring glory to Jesus. The focus is I want us to be a light, a beacon of hope to others. And we want to do the will of God. That is the key. Happiness is the outflow then. Seek first, as the scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put God's will first. And the result is all these other things will be added to you. So I want to remind all of us, the moment the relationship becomes inwardly focused and it's just but you and your own happiness, it actually comes off worse in the end. Okay, so seek first the kingdom. Um, happiness isn't finding the right partner. It's, be it's about becoming the right person. And if you're still single, you know, the key is to enjoy life and to enjoy God. And ultimately, you're going to draw the right people into your life, whether it's friends 
or a partner. I mean, so we want to encourage you if you are still waiting. And I know there's some of you in our congregation and there might be some of you out there listening. It is an amazing time to invest. And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult when all your friends are getting married and they're finding the one. It's difficult to, to embrace the season, but this is exactly your key and your secret. And I know maybe you don't realize it, but when you're not yet married and you're not yet parents, it is most possibly the time in your life that you have the most time to invest in, in studies or in traveling or in doing a mission trip or growing in God, being involved at church because things do change when you get married in, in terms of your responsibilities, in terms of your focus. And I want to read you a scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 7, the Apostle Paul speaking about marriage. It's interesting that he wasn't married himself, but he... He had a lot of wisdom when it comes to, comes to marital relationships. But I have a pet doctrine that I think he's wrong. I just think he's wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding. Eh? You know, he's right. But you think he missed I think, out. Though. I think he missed out. Yes. So the scripture says, I want you to be free of the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. His interests are divided. And in the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has been ma never been married before can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and spirit. But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. So the investment we can make in our single years are just, it's so valuable and everything you invest in yourself, in growing in God, in growing as a person, would ultimately benefit your marriage. So I want to encourage you guys, don't just sit and wait for the right one. Do everything you can to embrace this time. And I always tell, especially the girls, it's a godly desire to want to get married. So please don't pray the prayer, God, take this desire away, because some people feel it will just be easier not to want to get married. It will just make my life so much easier. That's the wrong prayer to pray. It's a godly desire. God has put it inside of you. Rather ask him to help you to make the most of this season that you're currently in, to embrace it, to run with it. And you see, the, the, the bigger your investment in God when you're single, the bigger the investment will, will be when you're married. Because yeah, ultimately, your, your spouse cannot replace your relationship with God. He or she will never be able to replace that place. And if you learn to prioritize God before you get married, you will know how to prioritize Him when you are married. But you've never, if you've never prioritized Him before the time, it will get more difficult. So use this time to invest in your yeah. own life. So, I mean, I've seen this, especially among students, you know, like a guy would commit his life to Christ his life would be flipped around and as now he's now pursuing the Lord and he's growing. And then he finds or he just finds a girl and suddenly he's so distracted and suddenly he's not pursuing God anymore. And he actually loses that intimacy with God. And the result is just he loses out on life. You see, when you and I are connected to God, then he unlocks our identities. He unlocks our destinies. You know, I mean, who I was 20 years ago was just shocking compared to who I am today. So the key really is, is to be anchored in the Lord and to pursue God and to continue when you are married. Okay, it's about becoming, not just about finding. Okay, so um, there's a classic quote that says, desperation leads to perspiration and perspiration stinks on anyone. Desperation leads to perspiration and perspiration stinks on anyone. When you, the moment you become too desperate, you actually push people away because people can pick it up like eek, <laughs> a little bit too intense there. They're running the other direction. If we are too needy when it comes to friendships, when it be too needy about a, a, a romantic relationship, then people actually run away. So the key is, is to be fulfilled in God, to be so full of God and so whole and satisfied in Him that you can just enjoy life. 
Okay, so don't do the perspiration one. Focus on, uh, on being fulfilled in the Lord. Then it's attractive. I tell you, it is attractive. Okay, the second point is to be proactive and not passive. So especially for the men here, quickly, James 2, verse 20. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that's unfortunately us men sometimes, eh, foolish, that faith without works is dead. So you should have faith, but the evidence of faith is works. You, there's action. So you mustn't be too passive. So I want to encourage all of us to have faith when it comes to our relationships. Whether you are married already or not, you need to apply faith to your marriage, to your relationships, even being single. You need to believe that it is God's desire. If it's in your heart to be married, you need to believe that God is going to bring the right one across your path at some point. So I love the story about Gordon and Gina. There's a photo there. So Gordon is like in his middle, late 40s, and uh, sometime about a year ago or so in his life group, he shared that he shared with the guys, guys, I'm, pray with me. Come on, I'm, I'm trusting for the right one to come up across my path. And they prayed together as a group like that would be now, immediately. And so the next week, Gina came across his path, and she was always like, well, I don't care about you know, marriage. I'm probably never going to marry. It's okay. And here they met one another, and they are a lovely couple, a beautiful couple. And there's a bunch of other people also in their 40s that over the last year or two, They've met that special one and uh, been married or in the process of getting married. So I just want to release hope over those who might be giving up hope on the, on the future. Yeah, and okay. I just want to add as well that your journey is different. Don't compare your journey with anybody else because that's when we lose hope. We get despondent. We get jealous or negative. Your journey is unique. And if we look at Gordon and Gina, their journey has been unique. But now they've found one another, and they're going to build memories for the rest of their lives. So don't compare your journey with anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so as I said, that previous verse, it said, you know, faith without works is dead. So you need to have action. You need to, you need to pursue. So especially the guys, I want to encourage you, single guys, to have that cup of coffee with a lady, to step out, to position yourself in that place, to enjoy life and to see where things go. Okay, so what is the object of having a relationship, a romantic relationship? Is it to complete you? And there's this movie where the one line says, you complete me. I'm sure you've heard that. It's not true. Okay, it's not true. You don't need another human being to complete you. You need to be whole and have another whole to, and then together it's going to be beautiful. Okay, as it's been said, two halves don't become a whole. Two halves will make, there's a picture there, yeah? Two halves will make hell, not whole. So you can't be so needy. You can't be so like, oh, you, are, you fulfill, you complete me. No, that's not how it should work. It should be God fulfills us. God completes us. And then I can love you. I can serve you. We can do life together. Beautiful. Okay, but two halves will make hell not whole. Okay, so remember that and allow God to fulfill you and then it becomes easier. Okay, and last point I there. I also just want to add that I would encourage you to look for peace and not for perfection. I remember I had my list when I was still single, my list of everything I was looking for in a husband, which is, isn't wrong. Make your list, but then let it go. And give it to God. I think sometimes the right person is, is right there under your nose. And you don't recognize the person because you have this specific, very specific idea of what you are looking for, which isn't wrong. But sometimes we miss the person because we, we look for perfection and not for peace, not for potential. And ask God to make you see with the eyes of your heart. It, it happened very much with Andre and myself. I mean, God gave me literally gave me pictures of Andre, what he was going to become, like little snapshots almost in my, in my mind. And those things gave me so much peace, even though he wasn't, you know, I, I couldn't necessarily tick every little box that was on my list. But through the years, he's become... <laughs> I was shocking. I was just shocking. Through but I love Jesus, so that helped. Yeah. <laughs> through the years, he's become 
everything on my list and so much more. And I think we need, we need to partner with God and see potential. You know, if somebody loves God and if he's really, he or she is serving Jesus and they are growing as a person, you're not going to recognize that person five years from now, 10 years from now. Both of us have changed yeah. so much. So don't look for perfection and don't hold on to your list for dear life. Be flexible. Yeah, so you can put on the summary <laughs> slide there, just the first three points. How to fall in love, delight yourself in the Lord, don't become desperate, be proactive, not passive, look for peace not for perfection. And it's just so important, you know, um, when it comes to choosing a life partner, you know, when we're desperate, then we like, oh, well, there he is this guy. And, you know, he doesn't love God. He doesn't have a relationship with God. But I'm so desperate. So maybe I'll never find anybody else. So you just go with that. And the result often is that people find themselves 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. And your passion might be, man, I love Jesus. He's the lover of my soul. He's my everything. And I want to Talk about him, but now you can't even talk to your spouse about this love relationship with God because he's not, he's not interested. You know, so that should really be like a bottom line. You know, there's just something about when both parties, for me and Sonica, this is what takes our relationship next level into a great marriage is that, you know, we, we spend time with God individually and we get things out of the scriptures and we have you know, we, we see things in the Word of God, and then we share it with one another. And it's so amazing to think, wow, I, I read this, and I saw this, and we can pray together and share together. It's just, it's beautiful. Okay, so rather be patient. Don't, uh, don't just go for a plan B. Don't do plan B. Don't do plan B. Okay, so falling in love needs a pulse, but staying in love needs a plan. Staying in love needs a plan. So let's share about a bit more about marriage now, but you need a plan to stay in love. Come on, say plan. Plan. You need a plan. So there's a quote that says, marriage is a love story that never ends. That's what it's supposed to be. But so often, you know, when we have these Disney animations, then at the end of the story, the fairy tale ends when? When they get married. And the beautiful part is the before marriage and now like the end. And we don't want to see anything from here onwards because it's just a disaster. It's painful. It's horrific. We feel sorry for them. You know, and you see this in the world. We see when somebody gets, no, they're about to get married and they're like, oh, shame, man. <laughs> Life was good until now. You know, but there's the cynicism in the world. And the reason is, you know, there's so many broken relationships. There are so many disappointments and, and, and that affects our hearts. But that is not God's plan. That's not God's will. His plan is a beautiful marriage, not a mediocre marriage, a great marriage. But then we need to do it God's way. And I mean, we are living testimony of it. We're not perfect. We have our issues every 10 years or so, but I always joke about that. But, you know, we... Uh, <clears throat> Not perfect, but it's beautiful. It's two imperfect people who refuse to give up on one another. It's beautiful. That's God's plan. So I want to encourage you, if there may be a bit of cynicism in your heart, the disappointments, or like, uh, you know, don't allow that in. Allow God to release hope into you, because that is his, his will. Okay, so if your focus is on finding the right one, and now you have found the right one, you found the ring, you found the venue, you found your partner, you got married, now what? Because it's all been about finding. Now, if, if it's becoming, it's a different focus. You know, us men, ladies, for those who don't know, we, we like to conquer. We want to like, we have the challenge. Okay, I need to win her heart. Now, this is before marriage. I need to win her heart. I need to, the, oh, we're into flowers and things and we look romance and like, I need to win her heart. Did you get the finger on the ring on the finger? I need to get it to the to the wedding day. And yes, hallelujah, honeymoon. Praise God. I often joke about it that when the male, female, when they're standing at the altar, and you know, and you can see the woman, she has thought through it. And when you do those vows, she's like, yes, babies, yes. Clothes, washing and cooking and cleaning. Yes, you can see the sober, deep commitment from the lady. You can see that, see it in their eyes. It's like, yes. Or like, yes. 
And then the guy is like, yes, honeymoon, yes. He hasn't thought beyond honeymoon. He's still just honeymoon, yes, yes. And then real life hits later. But anyway, for those who don't know, that's sort of how it works. <clears throat> and then, then we realize, oh my word, I actually have to work on this thing and it's not so easy. But uh, you can't focus on finding. You need to focus on becoming, on continuously investing. Okay, so how do we stay in love? The truth is this. We don't lose our love. We lose our focus. We don't lose our love, we lose our focus. I'm sure some of us that have been married for a while, you've seen that picture. <laughs> now at this time, over the last few months, church has been a bit quiet, so I have been filling up my time with some other things. So this is where you all please need to pray for Sonica and for me. So since beginning of December, I've been clapping the golf and I've been doing squash, squash tournament, currently in the squash tournament. And I'm just, thank you, Jesus, that the American elections are over because that, that was just distracting. And uh, so I have been, but I've been shocked at how easy it is to shift your focus onto other things. And this is for us men. That's unfortunate how it works. The ladies tend to focus more inside the house and focus on the relationships. And we men like Korea and doing things and conquering. And, you know, and when we play squash or golf or anything else, we do it for the relational side of things. It's not about winning. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's about destroy your opponent. That's what we do. <laughs> but it's so easy for us to shift our focus away from what really matters. And that's why I think this is our biggest danger, especially for the men. We lose our focus. We have found. We've have found this, this one. And then, you know, the truth is relationships don't stay the same. In other words, if you don't invest, it's not like it's going to stay the same. It, either you are growing in connection or either you are losing the connection. Either you're growing in intimacy or you are losing intimacy. It is never the same. And we need to remind ourselves about this. Because, you know, we men, we've got like a car service you know, like, service the car once a year, everything's lacquer. Uh, guys, that's a car, huh? That's not marriage. Continually filling up the love tank. That is the only way to have intimacy and to make it a beautiful, beautiful marriage. Okay, so I want to encourage you guys for that, to uh, prioritize, to get the focus back, and to make quality time. So like us this weekend, we are not focusing this weekend, quality time, family time, no golf, and uh, it's amazing. A little bit of focus, and suddenly you're connecting again, and things are beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so the next point that I want to, in terms of staying in love, and this is something I've discovered over the last few weeks again, about the last month, you need to be clothed in humility. We need humble, soft hearts if our relationships are to flourish. 1 Peter 5 verse 5, it says, Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. So it's not just women submit to the man. It's submissive to one another. There's a soft heart. Submission is about a heart attitude. It's about deferring to one another. So when it comes to things in the house, Sonica, she runs the house in that sense. So I defer to her in things. Other things is more my thing again than then uh, she follows me in that sense. But it says, be clothed with humility. It's like a garment you need to put on if you want your re relationships to work. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humility, I think, is one of the reasons you will never arrive in your marriage. It's not like, hey, we've focused on our marriage now for a few weeks. Now we can just park it for a year. No, you need to, again, focus again. Invest, quality time. Well, we have like morning, Friday mornings is like our date morning time. So we have a weekly uh, a date where we connect and have just focused, focused time. So there needs to be continuous investment. Okay, so about a few weeks ago, I discovered again the power of humility. So I was at home watching a golf video. I was sorting out my swing. 
So I was watching this video and uh, I've only been like really into this for like six weeks continuously. So it's not like, you know, just watching videos and things. And so now I'm trying to sort on my swing. So I watch the video, then I run outside onto the grass and then I practice my swing and then I go back and check the video again. Is that correct? You know, that was sort of what I was doing. So now I'm watching this video and it's, I mean, this is important stuff, people. This is my swing. So I am in the middle of the video. I'm focused, this is intense. And uh, so suddenly Sonica is standing next to me and she's sharing with me about the alarm system, some issue with the alarm system. And I sort of listen to what she's saying and I'm making my sums and I'm like, I can sort that out later. And I continue watching my video. I don't respond to her, I don't communicate anything. I'm just like watching my really, really important video. What, what did you experience in that moment? <laughs> So yeah, we're talking about two worlds. I coming from a world of my world is super important. Now, please take a break from this video. You've been watching these things for six weeks. And he's coming from, uh, just give me two minutes, but we're not talking, right? I, I'm, I'm expecting him just to stop because I have communicated the problem. He's making a few assessments in his mind that he can wait and she can wait. And I'm like, no, this can't wait. So it's silly, it's super silly. But I leave the room, he continues with his video and now I am my, you know, like they talk about this host pipe of love. He's just been stepping on my host pipe and oh, I can't get air, you know, that kind of, you know. She can't feeling. breathe, I she can't, can't breathe. breathe. The man's being unloving, <laughs> uncaring, he doesn't care. So it's two worlds and I, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about, that we need to merge. And all of a sudden, a very, very small thing becomes this very big thing. So it's like a Saturday afternoon and we have this plan for the evening. I have a lovely family time. We're going to bribe. We're going to have a great time. Now I'm coming out and I'm, I'm picking up his issues. I'm vibes, vibes. Whew. And I can't believe it. I mean, we were all very happy. I was very happy. <laughs> And now we have issues, <laughs> and I'm like, she's, I mean, she's very unhappy, and I'm like, I can't believe it. And the fact that he is, you know, these issues, I can't believe it makes me even more upset, because, I mean, he is not helping the situation, he's whistling the... And now I'm upset because she's upset, I can't believe <laughs> that she's upset, and I'm like, you. So now I know something, I'm going to now reconcile, so I made up, I made the decision in my head, I was evaluating, just from a normal male perspective, which is perfect assessment, as usual. So I'm assessing the situation. I come to the conclusion that it's not my fault. It's all her fault. So I'm like, this, this time, it's not me. This time, she's being unreasonable. She can't give me another five minutes to finish the video, and so more. So I just realized this is 100% Sonica, nothing my fault, and... I decided I'm going to tell her that because <laughs> this is just how it is. I'm not going to apologize. It's not my fault. It's all you. So I tell the Sonica this time, it's all you. It's all you. It's not my fault. It's, you know, and, and as you can imagine, that went off just beautifully. He didn't only tell me that it's my fault. He told me I have, I'm making a habit. We're very, very transparent this morning. See, this is group counseling, guys. Thank you for being here. Group counseling. It, it told me that I'm making a habit of spoiling our family time. Now, I'm already, I've already been crying for an hour. Vian's already checking on me. Mommy, are you still sitting outside? You know, he's like, you know, rubbing my shoulder. Then he leaves again. Not Andre, my son. He's like trying to save the situation. Now Andre says, I'm making a habit of spoiling our family time. Something he should have... Yeah, no, I'm going to sort it out now. <laughs> we're going to sort this out. So, so we were going from a really small issue, just two worlds that needed to be merged, to this is now a disaster. It, it is a disaster. Our whole family evening is, is like... Down the drain. <laughs> so anyway, so my first attempt at reconciliation <laughs> made things worse. So I leave, I go back to my room and I'm like, Ugh, how are we gonna solve this? I'm like, I did nothing wrong. And I'm not saying I'm sorry, cause it's not my fault. So then I decided to pray about it. Always a mistake. 
to pray about it. So I prayed about it. I was like, God, we need some help here. This tonight, our family night is like gone. It's down the tube. And so I prayed about it. And as I'm praying, suddenly I find perspective. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I realize that I made assumptions, like while I was watching my little video, I was assuming, obviously she understands that I am busy and she must give me a few minutes. And I realized I didn't communicate. I didn't tell her, oh, Sonica, sorry, I'm just quickly busy. Yeah, I'm gonna finish now five minutes, then I will tend to the alarm situation. But I didn't communicate well. I made assumptions and the result is I came across unloving and uncaring. So all of these, I'm seeing lights from heaven Jesus downloading things to my heart. And then I realized I am wrong. Can you imagine that? We were both, we were both wrong. But I think our, our problem was the situation was getting worse. It was, I think, every time we're in a position where we feel that it's truly, truly and honestly this time, it's 100% the other person's fault. You're not going to solve it. And we should know better. We, we should know better. Yeah, but, but I was persuaded this time. He was persuaded. This time, it's it's me, and I. I mean, I take I take my ownership. You know, if I should have given him time, he should have just asked me for more time. But in that moment, my thing was so important to me, and in that moment, I felt he can wait. He's been watching this for how many weeks? Surely, pausing. A, you can pause a video, guys. Come on, it's just golf, by the way, people. It's not just about keeping a little <laughs> white ball across green pastures. It's like golf. It's like really. But important. our problem wasn't the issue anymore. Our problem was now conflict management, and actually getting into the other person's shoes, getting into the other person's world. Yeah. And so I came to the conclusion that I can say I'm sorry. <laughs> so I like prayed about it, got perspective. Then I went back outside. I, said to Sonica, I am really sorry. I, I realize now I should have communicated better. And I'm sorry for being unkind, uncaring, unloving. It was, I can understand now from your perspective. And then we solved it. Then we had a beautiful, within 15 to 20 minutes, we had a beautiful evening, lovely family gathering. Uh, but, 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 but it hit me between the eyes, the importance of humility. I just realized if I didn't take the time to humble myself before God, and then the time to go to her and to say, hey, I own my side. I am sorry. And then she said, she's sorry, and we found one another. But I realized that if we do not clothe ourselves with, with humility, you don't have grace. And I think for many of us, our relationships get strained when we are unable to humble ourselves, when we are unable to see it from the other person's perspective, when we are unable to turn to God and say, God, help me to see, help me to engage, and help me to own my side. I mean, think about this for a moment. Are you Jesus? Are you perfect? Anybody, please raise your hand on video. Guys at home, raise a hand. Any perfection? No. So we can always be more loving. We can always be more kind. We can always be more patient. We can always be more humble. We can always own something on our side. And that's how you reconcile. That's how grace flows in. I mean, we've been saying this, especially end of last year, we spoke about this, that you are a powerful person. A powerful person admits, I could have communicated better. A powerful person says, hey, I could have been more kind. I could have been more loving. A powerless person says, you made me angry. It's your fault. It's all your fault. That is a recipe for a disaster. And if there's a trend in your relationships of breakdown, maybe, just maybe, there's a bit of pride there. Just maybe there's a lack of humility there. Just maybe you need to learn to get perspective on the situation and own your side. And unfortunately, also what happens is when you've been hurt and wounded, you can't see straight. You see it through your pain. You know, and we must need to trust God to heal our hearts and to restore us. And obviously, we all have this desire for somebody just to look at us and to understand perfectly, right? But in this side of eternity, we would need to communicate and actually yeah. over communicate. We see it over and over clear communication, actually over communication in a relationship is necessary. We actually need to spell it out. 
because your spouse can't read your mind. You know, even after 20 years of marriage, I really want, I'm thinking Andre should know me by now. 20 years. I we, should. We spend a lot of time, people, we spend a lot of time together. I think he must know every little bit about me. He doesn't. He doesn't. I need to communicate. And I think sometimes we want something from our spouse and we don't even know what. You, you just kind of want something. You're not even clear in your own mind what you want. And that is where you need to evaluate what is my desire? What do I really want? And is it something that I can communicate? For example, if, if you have a DIY dad and your dad does everything in the home and now your desire is for your husband to do the same, maybe it's not a good thing to communicate. Maybe it's not the right expectation to put on him. So it's something you need to evaluate even if you know what you want. Is it something that you should communicate? Yeah, so with my, I'm not a DIY guy. I phone members of this church. <laughs> like, Erlen, come and help Erlen. Come and sort this thing out. That's what I do. So first of all, we need to, we need to know what we want, and then we need to communicate it if, if, it, if it's a realistic desire. So end of last year, I, I asked Andre if I can give him a, a couple of ideas of gifts that he can buy me. Because there's many occasions, eh? I, I remind him Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and Women's Day and, you know. Birthday. We're not even talking about anniversary now. So, and, and I know he wants to, but sometimes, even after 20 years, he doesn't, I don't know, I don't understand it, but in any case. Now, no, ladies, I'm, ladies, we guys, we're thicker. We, we need help. <laughs> I, we need help. I asked him, may I give you a few suggestions? And... Great was my surprise when he wasn't upset. No, he like, was yes, awesome. grateful. Made a list. Evernote. Make my list. <laughs> I gave him a list. You see, because you might think, again, communication, you might think you really want perfume for your birthday. And surely after 20 years, your husband's going to know your favorite one. And your husband thinks like a toaster, maybe. It's like the perfect gift for your birthday. Like and, toaster. And then, Put the picture on, yes. And then you... And then you toaster. get your toaster, yeah. and then you need to fake your gratitude because, I mean, uh, you, need, you need to somehow get yeah. the message across. No, 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 no. From a male perspective, toaster. We're going to toast stuff. Let's get a toaster. Beautiful. What's more romantic than <laughs> toasting bread? <laughs> Communication is king in a marriage. I mean, our very first gift or Andre's very first gift after we started dating, you won't guess what it was. It must have cost him a fortune, but it was the... I the, went all the way romantic. It was such an odd gift. He was my first boyfriend. I was like, is this what boyfriends give to their girlfriends? I didn't know, but in any case, he gave me a Bauer frying pan, like a <laughs> super heavy non-stick. It must have cost non him a fortune. Non-stick. It was beautiful. <laughs> Like Long this, warranty, it was amazing. This is a super odd gift, but I mean, by that at that stage, I didn't know any better. I'm, I'm just too thankful to get something at least. <laughs> and then later I understood, you know. So when, when I saw the joy on his face when he visits me and he's frying his own eggs with my gift, I realized he bought it for himself. No, 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 for us. <laughs> It was for us. <laughs> so even, even right at the start, I realized, okay, there's some coaching that I need to do. But communication. And sometimes we think it's going to spoil the fun by communicating your desires. But ultimately, your spouse cannot read your mind. And yeah. he or she is not going to know exactly uh, you're hungry, you're tired. I mean... No, we can't expect it of anybody, but we sometimes and often do expect it of our spouse. So ladies, communicate. Tell us what you like, don't like, explain it to us, encourage us to make notes so we can remember, you know, but help us. I mean, I appreciated that Sonica gave me some ideas for gifts because it's just like, awesome, now I know what you really want and let's do it, let's make it happen. Yeah, and keep on communicating because they might forget. You see, that's the... That's now the downside of this exercise. You might do the communication and then the list gets lost. I, I really hope you still have your list. I really hope so. It's but the me. list can get lost. So you have to re-communicate. I heard this story from, 
from a couple where the, where the, the wife communicated to the husband that flowers aren't that important to her. It's not like, you know, these great big bouquets of flowers. He heard she doesn't like flowers at all. That's what he heard, like right in the beginning of their marriage. He doesn't give her flowers ever, and she doesn't know what's going on. And then later they discovered that one little bit of communication, which she wanted to tell him maybe these other gifts that would mean more. Or, you know, spending a lot of money on flowers is not necessarily what I want, but, but he got it as she doesn't like flowers. So he's not going to ever buy her flowers. And I just realized we need to not only communicate once, we need to communicate over and over. Also, we change, right? Today, I might not like flowers. In two years from now, I, I might love flowers. That is what's <laughs> that God makes help it us, interesting. Guys. God help us. We figured her out and then she changes. Ay, ay, ay. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. No, it does. It does. Focus, focus. <laughs> <laughs> and something else that I just want to add before we close is something that really adds to us staying in love is having an outward focus. You know, it's family time's good. It's awesome. Date nights are good. You have to make time for that. But ultimately, if your relationship is going to consist of me, myself, and I, and we, and us, you're going to run out of love because we actually, as we give... As we breathe out, you know, breathe out, we can breathe in again. As you give, you will receive. And it, yeah. it gives you things to talk about. You know, whenever Andre and I go on a mission trip together or we do something like today, or it, it actually gives us something to talk about. Because if it's just you and yourself and your relationship, you're going to run out of things to talk about. Yeah. So you need to find a greater purpose. So that next slide there. Yeah, and it, it can look different for each one of us. But ultimately, if you are going to just focus on you, the staying in love ingredient will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the more we focus on other people, and I'm not saying you do that at the extent or at the cost of your relationship. You, we're not running around, you know, just doing everything for everybody and you're not looking at your own family. It's not what I'm saying. But ultimately, if it's only an inward focus, your love ingredient will become smaller and smaller and something we do every five years it's now become a little bit of a tradition for us is every five years we invite about 15 or 16 couples and we renew our vows and we we have a little like a mini little wedding you know, and often we think we you know you need to wait until there's a major reconciliation or a major breakdown plus reconciliation before you renew our vows and why can't we just do it because we celebrate marriage and because we celebrate the, the, this beautiful covenant, and we could spend that money on ourselves. We could actually do something really nice with, with this money that we save towards something like this, but we want to share it. We want to make people a part and let them do their vows again as well, and in that, we receive so much for us. Yeah, so the next slide, you see a few photos of having communion together, going through the vows. That was our 15-year celebration, 15 year. so this year we're 20 oh, years, 20. so... Yes, and it's just that, 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 again, for me, it's the difference between mediocre and a great marriage. To do things together for the cause, for, for the kingdom of God, it, 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 it changes one's heart and it adds so much into the relationship. Like, say, last night, Sonic and I would be sitting in bed and we had communion together. We were praying for you guys. We're praying for the service. We're praying for people with challenges in the church. And the result is that we experience God's presence, and we grow closer to one another. So for those who are married, are you praying together? Are you having communion together? Are you focusing on those outside your home who needs God, who need a touch from heaven? So I want to encourage you to do that. Okay, so there's a summary on the slide. How do we stay in love? Don't lose your focus. Be clothed with humility. Communicate clearly and often and find a greater purpose. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Worship team can join us here in the front. Please stand with me. I'm going to pray for us. Now, what I want to especially bring before God today 
is our hearts for, for hope. Maybe you are married, but it's really struggling and you need hope. Or you're single and been single for a long time and you've become cynical uh, about marriage. You know, maybe your parents have been divorced or you've just had so much disappointments in your life that your heart has become cynical. Now, the good news is this. In Jesus, we have hope. God is able to restore our hearts. God is able to heal our hearts and to make us new. Amen. So I want to pray for us. And maybe just before I pray, I want to encourage you also. You know, Jesus hung on the cross truly, truly innocent. He's the only person who ever was innocent. The rest of us are all guilty of something. In every relational conflict, there is always both sides, not just the one side, but both. And so if Jesus can forgive, you know, if Jesus can hang on that cross, go through absolute hell, and yet say, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do, then you can also, you can forgive. You can forgive your, your, your partner. You can forgive your spouse. Ladies, yo, as I said, we men sometimes are a little bit thick. So that prayer really applies to us. God forgive them for they do not. We have no clue what we're doing when it comes to relationships. We need help. We all need help. In God's word, we find the truth. We find principles that help us. And so I just want to encourage us. Some of the guys you've been disappointed with, the woman in your life or a woman from the past, and, and Jesus wants to heal your heart. So I want to encourage you, forgive. It's never 100% the other side's fault. If you've been divorced, it's partly your fault as well. If you've had broken relationships, it's partly your fault as well. Okay, so I want us to pray and ask God to heal our hearts. Let's cast off the baggage. Let's cast off the wounds of the past. Jesus is here and he's at home with you guys at home. The presence of God is there and he wants to heal you today. So I'm going to pray for us and then I just want us to maybe just respond. and I'm going to lead us in a prayer as well. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we want to humble ourselves before you. We don't know how to have great relationships without your help. We don't have the capacity in ourselves to be humble, to be soft, gentle, hearted without your help. And so, Lord, we pray for every one of us for grace to approach the throne of God. Lord, to come and sit at your feet and to allow you to soften our hearts. Lord, I pray for every heart here where there's disappointments, where there's offenses, where there is, you know, expectations that have been unmet. Lord, I pray for forgiveness to flow. Lord, we pray for hearts to be healed. And we declare, God, that we're not going to be cynical. We're not going to allow failures of the past or other people's failures to define our outlook on life. And Lord, I pray for the hard hearts to be softened. And we pray for the cynical hearts to be healed. In the name of Jesus, we pray for forgiveness to flow. And Lord, I pray for hope to be released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let hope arise in our hearts. Let the light of Jesus shine upon us. May we try again. May we invest again without holding back, without fear. In the name of Jesus, I just sense some of us have been hurt and we've built walls around our hearts. You're so afraid of getting hurt again. So you're holding back. You're not loving wholeheartedly. And that's a greater danger. When you cover your heart, when you hold back, then you cannot have the love you so desire. You need to love fearlessly. Jesus is able to carry you through every situation. So Lord, let hope arise. 
So just pray this prayer with me as we dedicate our hearts to the Lord. Just say, Father God, I bring my heart before you. Heal me. Restore me. And clothe me with humility. Lord, I own my stuff. I am a powerful person. I can love better. I can be more kind. I can forgive. Lord Jesus, I renounce cynicism. And I ask that you would restore me and make me whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commit my heart into your hands and help me to become the right person, to become more like Jesus. Just wanna pray for you. So Father, we pray that we would all just fall in love with you, Jesus, more and more every day. So I just want us to sing that I love you, I love you. Just to end off, I just want you just to focus on falling in love with Jesus again because in his presence, our hearts are healed. In his presence, we receive soft hearts. In his presence, we receive humility to love well. Let's just sing that chorus bit. Love is Lord. you Jesus again may our hearts run after you and may the love of God fill us and overflow into all of our relationships in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so father we release healing into marriages and I felt it in the previous service but I feel to just share this again I feel in my spirit the Lord is saying this specifically for a marriage or marriages that are really battling I just feel the Lord is saying it's not the end he is able to make it new so let hope arise and contend for that marriage by drawing near to God first and then to one another so father I release your blessing over your people I pray, Lord, that this week that our marriages and our relationships in general will flourish. And I pray, God, that we will live life passionately for you and to your glory. And I also just feel in my heart, I know there's some ladies especially trusting for the man in their lives to turn to God and to pursue God. And I just sense in my spirit prophetically that God's going to move in that man's life as you love him as you honor him as you respect him despite his lack of good performance or behavior in general 
just allow the grace of God to touch his heart. There's something about a man's heart that is softened when a woman treats him with respect, even when he acts like an idiot and he knows it. When you treat him with respect, you open the door for God, for grace to flow in. So don't give up hope. And we pray, Lord, that heart, the hearts of men especially, would really be impacted to turn to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, and I also just want to pray for those who are still in a waiting season. God, you know who they are. Everybody, Lord, is waiting upon you for the right person who's waiting upon you for the right time. Lord, I just release the two people that need to connect. I just Jesus release name. the perfect time, the perfect situation. Yes. Lord, I thank you for a grace upon us as a congregation, upon your church even, Lord, for people to meet and for people to know this is the the right one that you have handpicked for them. Jesus. So Lord, we just come against despair. We come against despondency. We come against negativity. We come against jealousy. Lord, we come against any negative emotion. Lord, and I pray for the hearts of everybody in a waiting season. Yes. And I just release hope. I release faith. I release joy. Jesus. And I release contentment in this season that they will make the most of this specific season. But I thank you, God, for the right people to meet. I thank you, Lord, just for a grace for men to rise up and to know, and to know who to pursue, for women to rise up, Lord, and to wait upon you. We thank you, Lord, just for your, your beauty and your power in each and every life, in Jesus' name. Amen.